Hi everybody, Scott Hards here, and it's been a long time since I've been this genuinely enthused about a new aircraft release. Now, if you've got any kind of vision at all, you've already figured out what it is, because it's such a distinctive looking airplane. It's a brand new Lockheed P-38 from Tamiya. Uh, I have a, a very soft spot in my heart for the Lockheed P-38, even though I'm mostly a naval aircraft guy, and that's because the P-38 is the first airplane model I ever built in my life. We're talking literally like 45 years ago. My dad gave me a model of Lightning when I was a boy, and I remember building it. And after I got done with that, uh, I also built a Mitsubishi Zero. And throughout my entire youth, I had a P-38 chasing a Zero uh, around the ceiling of my bedroom. So lots of fond memories there. Uh, now, what I don't have fond memories of, of course, because it didn't exist in the old kit I built, was the absolutely amazing detail that we're seeing uh, in the shots that Tommy has put out here uh, at, the, at the show. All of the detail that you can see and a lot of the detail that you can't see when you look at the P-38 has all been faithfully recreated here. You know, the P-38 had huge landing gear bay doors because of the way the gear worked, and all the detail within is so clearly shown here. You know, uh, hydraulics and fuel lines and all the other stuff, it's all there. This is fabulous work. The stuff in the cockpit uh, behind where the pilot sits is all replicated. Uh, I could go on and on, but let's uh, just focus on the highlights here. The kit itself is of the kind of mid, early -er to midstream uh, P-38F and G. Uh, there's some minor differences between the F and G, the biggest probably being uh, the type of canopy, and they've got parts for both in there. Uh, the canopy opening to the side and to the back uh, for the two different versions. Uh, also some different versions of the uh, turbines uh, that are included for this aircraft. Uh, this, is, this is really, really exciting because it's such an iconic aircraft. And, uh, you know, I'm going to talk about the real plane here for a second, not the kit, but that's what makes these kits exciting. It's because they're, they're about such famous and amazing aircraft. The P-38 was like the only American warplane, major warplane, that was in production during all of the years of World War II. It was uh, in service before Pearl Harbor and still in production uh, at the end of the war, of course, constantly being improved. And except for the most tight-in dogfighting, the P-38 could do just about anything. Uh, it was great at long-range interception, as uh, Admiral Yamamoto learned to his uh, uh, his very unpleasant surprise. Uh, it was great as a dive bomber or a light bomber, uh, reconnaissance missions, you name it. Uh, the P-38 could do just about anything. I also have fond memories of the P-38 when I was still doing aircraft books about 25 years ago because I got to sit in the cockpit uh, of a number of P-38s and do photography of them. And it's the biggest fighter cockpit I've ever been able to sit in uh, compared to like the Spitfire or the Zero, which are tiny. The inside of the cockpit of the P-38 for the pilot was almost like a little living room in there uh, in terms of space that they could uh, expand uh, into on those long, long missions. So it would have been, I'm sure, a reasonably comfortable aircraft for pilots to, uh, to sit in. Now, the P-38 model, if you've ever built one before, you know, is usually tail-heavy because of all this plastic behind uh, the landing gear. But Tamiya has taken care of that for us by including uh, heavy ball bearings that you get to put into uh, the nose of both of the, uh, the engine sections and also behind the cockpit. So the kit comes with three large ball bearings that you hide away within the body of the model uh, to keep it sitting properly uh, without having to have any kind of uh, a weird, uh, you know, uh, uh, support or anything uh, behind the tail. Uh, of course, we're hoping that maybe uh, at some point in a year or two, we could also get a P-38J, which was uh, a later version of the aircraft used uh, a lot in the Pacific Theater. Uh, but for starters, I don't know why anybody would want to wait. This is a glorious new model of one of the most iconic warplanes in American or World War II service, the new P-38 from Tamiya. All right, hey guys, now I'm back here and still at the Tamiya booth. Now, this is something that I was actually really getting, hoping to get a chance to talk about. And we have the brand new Toyota GR Supra. So the reason that I was really wanting to talk about this one here, actually, if you could point your camera over at this one. So this is an older release of the Toyota Supra, as we would call the Mark IV Supra. If you've watched Fast and the Furious, of course, you know this car. And this was actually the last car that I owned in America before moving to Japan. Mine was black. And what made this really famous was uh, this is a really super fast car. It was powered by the 2JZ GTE engine, which was a turbo turbocharged inline six engine twin turbo. It was a really fast car. I miss this car terribly. It was probably the best car that I have ever owned. And this was discontinued in America. The last year it was made was 1998. My car 
My Supra was a 1993 model, which was the very first model year that the Supra was available. So I think in Japan, though, it lasted on until 2000. I don't think it lasted as long as the Skyline did, but they did. Uh, it was released in Japan for a number of years after they stopped uh, selling it in America, and that had a lot to do with how the economy went in anyway. But anyway, let's talk about the new GR Supra. So from this year, finally, Toyota has actually released a brand new Supra, and they are calling it the GR Supra. The GR stands for Gazoo racing which was their new kind of performance brand and this actually is not a car that is built by Toyota this is actually based on the same platform it's the same engine as the BMW Z4 Roadster and I believe they're making a Z4 coupe I could be wrong but one of the reasons that uh, Toyota went along with BMW to develop this car is that Toyota just does not produce an inline six engine any longer so BMW, of course, is one of the last manufacturers out there that still makes the inline-six turbocharged engine. So that's one of the reasons they went with it. Actually, also here in Japan, I do not believe... In America, I think the only model they're releasing is the inline-six engine. But in, um, in here in Japan, you actually are able to buy this, the brand-new Super with four-cylinder engines as well. There's a low-power 200-horsepower engine, and I believe there's a more mid-power turbocharged four-cylinder which produces around 280 horsepower I want to say my memory could be fuzzy so but if you want the, the big kahuna of course the six-cylinder is still available here in Japan so this kit from Tamiya actually has if we can take a look down here at the parts speaking of different America and uh, Japan releases for the car you'll notice there's two dashboards in here and there's two center consoles so you're it looks like you're going to be able to build this car as either left hand drive or as right hand drive so you should be able to do both the American spec and the Japanese spec if you want of course this is a curbside kit there is no engine included so you won't have to worry about if you're going to build this with a four cylinder or a six cylinder engine you just that option just is not there so another cool thing I want to point out about this kit is I've heard that they are molding this body here. It's going to come in this uh, molded in white. So this is actually going to make it a bit easier to paint here because when the plastic itself is white, you should be able to paint it a bunch of different colors on the top. You don't have to worry about uh, getting the primer correctly, which is going to help a bit. Also, another cool feature that I've noticed for this kit here is you have your kind of standard uh, chrome-plated wheels, but then also over here you have these black inserts. And this is going... To these black inserts combined with the chrome wheels is going to give you that nice effect there with the black parts and the chrome there. So that is not something you have to worry about masking and trying to paint separate. You should be able just to get that straight from the plastic. If you want to do that, of course, if you paint it, of course, it's going to look a lot better. Of course, you get some nice masking stickers, which is definitely going to help with painting the windows. You got decals, of course, for the super decals and a lot of decals for around the, the sides and what have you course standard rubber tires and some mirrors there for the chrome part so I'm definitely looking forward to getting this kit this is actually a car that I actually really kind of want to buy the real thing at some point I'm thinking about getting another Supra if I get the Mark 5 or if I just buy another used Mark 4 I, I still haven't decided but uh, definitely an exciting release from Tamiya all right, so another new release here from Tamiya. It's the 38T, the Panzerkampfwagen 38T. So actually, this tank was developed by Czechoslovakia. And of course, after Germany kind of took over Czechoslovakia, they actually continued to use this tank throughout the war. They renamed it the Panzerkampfwagen 38T. There you can see a nice image of a real one that still survives. It's, uh, I mean, it's, it's a pretty nicely detailed kit. It's not... Uh, not uh, terribly too detailed. Oh, we can take a closer look at it. Thank you very much. It looks like it comes with a driver figure here. So it has, it's going to be link and length track on it, so it's not going to be workable track or workable suspension, but yeah, just for what you get, it looks quite nicely detailed, I have to say. All right, so other new armor releases at the Tamiya booth. We have, well, let's take a look at the, the Panther Offseat. I believe we've had uh, other 48 scale release Panthers from Tamiya before, but now we're getting the Offseat version, which is slightly new. And this is going to be out in 
November for only 2,300 yen. So just like other 48 scale Tamiya kit releases, it looks like this one still comes with that die cast metal hole, which adds a little bit of extra weight to it. So they've been they've used the, the die cast holes for some of the older uh, 48 scale Tamiya releases. I think a lot of the newer stuff tends to have just plastic, but of course this is based on uh, one of the older panther kits i believe but even still it looks quite nice i have to say also over there on the right uh, october release is a japan ground self-defense force light armored vehicle lav so this is the japanese version of the famous hummer and uh, those type of vehicles of course it is quite a lot smaller than what the americans use still a very versatile and useful vehicle what they call a K-car, car, which is a line of three-cylinder, 660cc cars that uh, meets a kind of government, government regulation, set of government regulations here that fits under like a certain tax bracket, so they're really cheap to own and really cheap to operate. So that's, that's, that's where the Suzuki Jimny got to start, and they still make them here in Japan. So it's a really cool-looking, nice, boxy car, and actually here, they're still, it's still a four-wheel drive car, so it's going to be excellent for off-roading and what have you. All right, so, so looking over at the other cars, there's a 2000 GT we've seen in previous shows. Of course, you got the Toyota Prius. I know Toyota Prius out here. Out there, there has its fans, of course, the Toyota 86. So if you're interested in car models, maybe you don't want to go through and you don't want to have the hassle of painting it, or you just want something maybe to have for like a younger person to try out, get them into modeling, then this lineup of 30-second scale kits from Aoshima is quite something that I would recommend for to check out. And of course, the whole lineup is available on our site, hlj.com.
All right, over here at the Hasegawa booth, so one of their new releases is going to be the Nissan Bluebird SSS Attends Limited, and this is the U12 Early. So, in America, we will not have known it by the Bluebird name. This is going to be the 1988 Nissan Stanza. I have got to be honest with you, this is a car that I barely remember. It's one of those cars that you saw often on the road. You probably still see it around on the road quite often, just just at the rate that we tend to keep used cars on the streets here in America. So if you're interested at all in the old Nissan Stanza, Hasegawa is going to have a kit coming for you soon here. When was the release? In December for 3,200 yen. Uh, this looks like it's going to also just be a standard curbside kit. I am not seeing an engine on the inside of here. Well, I believe that would be the bottom side of the trans transmission or the transaxle there. So at least you got some nice underside detail for this kit, which is quite interesting. Not a very interesting vehicle in my opinion, but somebody, uh, Hasegawa, apparently loves this enough to make a nice kit of it. All right, so they don't actually have the plastic that we can see of this, but it says in 2020, in March of 2020, we're going to get a brand new Mitsubishi Lancer Turbo. So this is the 1980s Lancer here. And, of course, this is what led to the very famous Lancer Evolution. So this is kind of a prequel to that famous car. It still has the turbo engine, but 1980s quality Mitsubishi technology, if you are familiar how well that was. Of course, my... My very first car had, was a 19, well, it was powered by a 1988 Mitsubishi built engine, which was in a Hyundai body, which I won't get into that whole deal, but uh, an interesting, another interesting kit coming from Hasegawa next year. So another exciting new release from HK Models. So this one I actually just read about myself on the internet last week. So this is a brand new announcement that we have here just right before the show. And this is going to be a 148th scale, a brand new tool, 148th scale B17G. So of course from HK Model a number of years ago, how many years has it been? Five years maybe? We had the 32nd scale B17, which is quite a massive kit. And I have that one in my stash, waiting to be built at some point. So one of the complaints that we've that modelers have always had about the 30-second scale model that HK Models made was that they probably slight, got the nose, the, the, what do I say, they got the, the dimensions on the nose slightly wrong. So it looks like this 48 scale kit is definitely different than the 38 scale kit. So the 30-second scale kit, the nose is completely round. And the, all the modelers out there on the forums have complained that the B-17 should have a slightly flat spot at the top of the nose right before the windscreen. So from my viewpoint here at the show, looking at this model, it definitely does look like the top of the nose right before the windscreen is definitely a bit flatter compared to what we have on the 32nd scale kit. So that is quite nice to see. So one other thing I wanted to point out about this kit that I've seen other people questioning, wondering if it's going to have it or not, is that this kit does not have staggered waist guns. So both of the waist guns are exactly on the same position. So no staggered waist guns for this kit. Close. 
at the Platz booth. So here in Japan, Platz is the importer for dragons. It feels like it's been quite a while since I've talked about anything dragon. And that is because here at the show, actually, we see that dragon, after how many years has it been? It feels like it's been quite some time since we've had a brand new tool, anything from dragon. But here we are seeing... Yes, it's a kit that maybe a lot of people out there are wondering why we don't need another one of these, but it is a 148 scale Mr. Schmidt BF109E model. So an interesting thing to note about this kit is it looks like the fuselage here, usually aircraft fuselages, they're going to be molded in two parts that you're going to glue and you'll have to get rid of that seam on the back there, but it looks like this fuselage is molded in just one part. So some trick molding going on here. Of course, we got a nicely detailed engine, I have to say. So this kit actually looks, even though maybe we don't really, a lot of people out there are going to think we don't really need another 148 scale 109, but hey, why not? You know, Dragon's making something new. That's exciting enough for me. This is going to be due out in October next month, actually. So that's rather soon. I did not know that this was coming that soon. Hey guys, we're at the Five Miles booth and um, they all, always have a selection of Ghibli uh, kits to make and we've always show, or at least I always show off some of these in just a bit of a, a bit of a video. We don't normally talk about it, but this time actually we have a new kit that is just being released. When is it coming out? It's coming out uh, in December and it's the Air Destroyer Goliath from uh, Castle in the Sky. So it's a military airship utilized by the government to access the uh, castle in the sky. And so the real one is actually 348 meters long. And this one is a considerable amount smaller. So it's 120th scale. And uh, it's actually, you can see all of the, the really cool propellers on the outside that go both vertically and horizontally. Um, and it's got some of the weapons there too. This thing actually uh, is meant to contain various hydrogen and helium sections that uh, have catastrophic uh, military power. You can see some of the small, smaller barbette mountain cannons, some of the machine guns. Even the three spy planes underneath can actually be seen, which is a really nice detail that uh, I didn't expect them to do so well. But yeah, this is uh, coming out in December and I'd be happy to get it. 